Thanks to CuriosityStream for supporting my channel. Watch the extended edition of my videos when you sign up for CuriosityStream and Nebula using the link in the description. About a year ago, I made a video debunking AI myths. I covered a lot of things in that video, but there was one comment in particular that some of you took issue with. If you trained an algorithm to, for instance, again, diagnose illness, how would it come up with its own goals that fly so directly in conflict with what you're trying to do. And in response, y'all left comments and sent me articles about AI systems not doing what we told them to. Some examples of this include that time DeepMind was teaching AlphaGo to play Go and it basically refused to play. That time OpenAI tried to use reinforcement learning to train AI agents to play hide and seek and the agents learned to slip between walls. And that time that researchers developed a survival simulation where one of the AI species evolved to survive by eating its own children. Now, it is true that algorithms aren't self-aware in any sense that is comparable to human intelligence, and so we don't really have to worry about them intentionally trying to take over the world anytime soon. However, we have seen a lot of examples of unintended behavior in AI systems. Instances of AI algorithms supposedly going rogue or cheating when they find bizarre and sometimes a bit concerning workarounds to the problems that we present them. These workarounds allow them to complete the task that we gave it, but not in the way that we were expecting. And to be clear, to say that an AI algorithm is cheating or going rogue implies intent, which is not the case here. So when we see algorithms develop behaviors that don't ally with what we expected them to do or the problem that we expected them to solve, it's not that the system has become self-aware and is deciding to do its own thing, but instead often means that we've developed a system that satisfies the literal objective problem that we asked it to solve without solving the problem that we actually wanted it to solve. In fact, this type of behavior has a name, specification gaming. But what causes specification gaming in AI, you might ask? Well, when we ask algorithms to solve problems, what we're actually doing is a form of mathematical optimization. This means that if we have a loss curve, which defines how well our model is performing compared to the labels of our training data or an expected reward, we're looking for a set of parameters or a policy that minimizes that loss. And loss curves don't typically just go straight down. Instead, they might go down a bit and then come back up and then go back down some more and then plateau a bit and then go back up and so on, depending on our optimization setup. And the problem is that if we don't define our problems well enough, algorithms can find solutions that minimize the loss or maximize the reward without actually solving the problem the way that we intended them to. Importantly, this is different from a suboptimal solution where an algorithm happens to find a local minima or a point in the loss curve that is not the lowest we can reach, but our model might get stuck there in spite of that, never reaching that global minima that we want. In specification gaming, we may have actually reached that global minimum, that lowest possible loss. It's just that the optimization problem that we are trying to solve isn't the one that we intended to. Now, in reinforcement learning, where we train a model to find a policy that optimizes some sort of reward, specification gaming often arises as a result of us not defining our environments properly or not defining the problem properly. For example, in this OpenAI demo, the boat is supposed to race through a game hitting islands to gain points. However, the model learns that repeatedly hitting the starting island is the best way to optimize the reward, so it doesn't play the rest of the game at all. However, specification gaming can also come in the form of what our data looks like or how we organize it. Take this paper, which tried to train a machine learning model to identify cancer skin lesions by looking at pictures of those lesions. Importantly, when pathologists look at tumors that they think might be cancerous, they photograph them next to a ruler for reference. Because of this, the model was more likely to classify a photo with a ruler next to it as cancerous, having nothing to do with the actual tumor itself. Now, this isn't to disparage the researchers behind this work. After all, when we talk about unintended consequences or unintended behaviors of AI systems, they are by definition unintended. We didn't expect to see them. In fact, part of the development process is rigorously testing our models to find those unexplained behaviors and see whether or not we can fix them as well as to figure out how they happen in the first place so that we can ideally prevent them from happening in other models. So obviously we don't want to deploy trained models that find these types of optimization workarounds because that unexpected behavior might have some significant real world consequences. For example, an algorithm designed to minimize the energy usage on a power grid in an effort to be more environmentally friendly might just 
turn the power off. Having said that, it's still pretty unlikely that specification gaming would cause any of the algorithms that we work with right now to take over the world. However, there is a hypothetical theory as to how that could happen, and it's called instrumental convergence. If you'd like a deeper dive into this, I'd highly recommend checking out Robert Miles' video on this topic, as it was the video that a lot of you pointed me to when I originally made that video on debunking AI myths. In short though, instrumental convergence is a hypothetical theory that a sufficiently intelligent algorithm with an unbounded and harmless, if not beneficial, final goal may act in harmful ways via the instrumental goals it pursues to reach that final goal. That was a lot of jargon, so let's look at a common example. We have an algorithm and we'd like for it to solve a pretty complicated math problem. That's its final goal. Relatively harmless might help us understand something that we didn't already know about the world, but probably isn't going to result in world domination. However, if we suppose that the algorithm is sufficiently intelligent, and this typically refers to artificial general intelligence, then this algorithm may realize that the best way to solve this problem is to expand the computational resources it currently has access to in order to focus those resources on efficiently working through this problem. As a result, it may start to recruit power from other computing systems, slowly taking over every computing resource on Earth. And this becomes a problem for us humans because now we're diverting computational resources away from other systems that need it. Things like hospitals, transportation systems, energy grids, and more. In this example, we've set up a model that isn't designed to do anything harmless, it's not designed to take over the world, but in solving the optimization problem of the resources that it needs in order to complete that final goal that we've assigned it, it inadvertently has some extremely harmful effects on us. And to be clear, this is a hypothetical theory, so there are no real-life examples of instrumental convergence. In fact, academic discussions on this particular theory often come with the caveat that a lot of researchers are highly skeptical that this will ever happen. However, it is a theoretical example that highlights the challenges of managing powerful algorithmic systems that don't conform to human values. And much of AI safety research, which is where theories like instrumental convergence typically come from, is focused on designing systems to mitigate these types of risks, in including things like specification gaming in real world systems today. So is AI going to take over the world anytime soon? Well, the answer is still probably not. And whether or not we're ever going to achieve something like artificial general intelligence, where we'd have to be worried about something like instrumental convergence is still a rather hotly debated topic within the field of artificial intelligence. Having said that, things like specification gaming or the general problem of specifying problems appropriately so that you design models to do what you actually actually want them to do is an ongoing challenge in the field. So if you want to hear more about AI safety research, I would A, definitely check out Rob Miles' channel, but B, let me know in the comments if there are other topics that you'd like for me to cover. So I'll stop here for now, that way this video doesn't become ridiculously long because I could talk about this all day. But if you do want to watch the extended version of this video or of a lot of the other videos that I put up, you should head on over to Nebula. Nebula is a creator-built platform where you get to watch my videos ad-free and me and some other creators that you've probably heard of can create and experiment with awesome content without having to worry about demonetization or paying tribute to the YouTube algorithm. We're thrilled to be partnering with CuriosityStream, a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction videos. Want to learn more about the data behind our models? Check out The Joy of Data, a documentary hosted by mathematician Hannah Fry, who goes on to explore what data is, how it's stored, shared, and what it reveals about us and the world around us. And where CuriosityStream is all about big budget nonfiction documentaries, we're building Nebula so that education and creators have a place to try out new content that might not work on YouTube. On Nebula, you'll find ad-free videos from some of your favorite creators, from Tierzu to Neurotransmissions to The Coding Train, as well as my Nebula Plus content, which includes journal clubs on interesting papers and extended versions of the videos that you see on my channel. You'll also find Nebula originals, like Tom Scott's Game Show Money and Questionable Advice, where Vanessa Hill from Braincraft tries to help me order less takeout. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so if you click on the link in the description or use my promo code JORDAN, you'll get access to CuriosityStream for 26% off their annual plans, with Nebula included for free for as long as you are a CuriosityStream member. That's less than $15 a year. Signing up for CuriosityStream and Nebula is a great way to directly support my channel while getting to watch my videos ad-free and get those extended behind-the-scenes versions. So sign up for CuriosityStream and Nebula at CuriosityStream.com JORDAN or using the promo code JORDAN. Otherwise, if you like this video, you can let me know by smashing the like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also check out the earlier video that I did on debunking AI myths if you want to hear about the other myths that we talked about. Otherwise, you can follow my PhD life on Twitter and Instagram, and I will see you guys on Monday. Bye!